On today's program, I interview John B. Wells. John B. Wells is the former host of Coast to Coast AM Saturday Night Show. He's the host of Caravan to Midnight, the man with the golden voice. To learn more about John B. Wells, visit caravantomidnight.com. John B. Wells, welcome back to the program. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me on again. How are you? Well, I'm good, thank you. John, Trump continues to be attacked by the Democrats and the Washington establishment. FBI Director Comey revealed the FBI is indeed investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere with the U.S. election and if there was any coordination between the Russian and Trump campaign team. Polls have Donald Trump's approval rating at 37 percent, disapproval at 52 percent. Your thoughts on Donald Trump so far and all that's happening to Donald Trump and the attacks and whatnot? Well, I trust those polls now about as much as I did before the election. Uh, I think they're large. Well, now I got that from MSNBC. Oh, gotcha. Oh, oh, man. You know, let me just start here. This is so much fun watching these people just self-destruct. Did you hear that thing on about uh, CNN where, where uh, one of them over there <laughs> said that Hannity pulled a gun on Juan Williams and Juan's going, he did not. Uh, I mean, these people are something else. And then uh, Rachel Maddow with the... Uh, with the, we've got his tax returns from 2005. Let's see. Now, what year is it, Rachel? It's 2017. So congratulations. You've got some tax returns that are only 12 years old. I mean, what a bunch of idiots. And, and the behavior. I don't know if you saw that guy. He looked like a some tough, young Irish kid, you know, came on talking about all the black men who are who are in jail. You know, he was just raising cane on uh, one of the, with one of the Fox girls there and just just acted like such a little brawling you know, it's just pathetic. I put uh, Donald Trump's approval rating at about, I don't know, 80%, and it would be higher if it were not for the fact that uh, he's he's had so much uh, opposition at virtually everything he wants to do, like this little judge out in Hawaii that um, not only uh, puts a stay on his uh, travel restriction, the second travel restriction, but then... Uh, tells the other uh, the other judges in the other states not to uh, not to go along with it either. And so he's effectively made himself uh, a little king, a little Supreme Court justice of, of uh, Supreme Court of one. So um, you know, everybody wants the lordly statesman. Well, publicly, he is not. Donald Trump is not the lordly statesman. However, when he's just sitting there quietly. Uh, speaking with someone who's uh, interviewing him, he's a little bit more uh, more statesmanlike and a little bit more lordly. I think the um, but but you can't have the style and the substance that you know that you want both of those components. Uh, that's a little bit of a stretch. Um, there are many people who have uh, who have irritating personalities, but but sometimes the irritating personality is is an interesting personality. The uh, I think the problem that Mr. Trump has is his incredulity at. Um, at the reaction of some of the people that he's going to protect and defend and serve just just as just as uh, effectively and with just as much zeal as he will the ones who voted for him. So I think he's a little. Uh, I, I don't think he had any idea. Maybe he did, but I'm I'm thinking that uh, he did not expect this uh, ongoing rolling blowback. And then, of course, you know, you got Obama set up two miles away from the White House. Nobody really understands why he did that. I do, and you probably do, but uh, many people do not. With his thirty, thirty-five thousand um, member army for in uh, organizing for action and all of this. I mean, pff, to me, Barack Obama is—he wants to be this country's Nelson Mandela. We can go into Mandela some other time if you want, but he's not what the media portrayed him to be. Wait, so you're saying there's a conspiracy by the mainstream media to paint the narrative? of Donald Trump's presidency as an incredibly unpopular presidency when, in fact, four out of five Americans, as you say, 80% are in support of the president. Well, I'm not a statistician, but I'm saying that it looked pretty, uh, it pr looked pretty obvious to me when the, when the entire election map turned red, with the exception of a few little blue dots here and there, and then the uh, so-called blue wall collapsed, and then Mr. Trump made the statement that, however brash it was, that... that um, a bunch of several million uh, illegals voted. Well, that really kind of looks that way because this is a big country, just as the planet is a big planet. 
And so um, as little hum individual human beings down here, we don't see the entire country. But there are a lot of people out there that just decided, you know, enough of this, uh, this uh, establishment thing. Of course, Mr. Trump is a part of the establishment to some degree, because when you start making that, that kind of money, you're going to be pulled into the establishment, no matter how much you want to remain uh, uh, independent and uh, free from any kind of outside influence. Probably uh, uh, Coelho. Was his name Pablo Coelho, the uh, the wrote the the Alchemist? I think he sold twenty million copies of that book. He probably lives in seclusion, completely separated from the establishment. But but I don't know. So I, I'm not saying that eighty percent of the country voted for him, but it certainly could make a pretty strong case based on the evidence of dead people voting, people voting multiple times, people being bussed into jurisdictions where they had, uh, you know, they didn't even have to show any identification. All they had to do was show up and vote. Uh, but so between illegals, dead people, uh, people being bused from one district to another, multiple voting, and uh, and the illegal uh, component, it's entirely possible that Hillary Clinton didn't win legitimately the popular vote either, if she did at all. And we know that that for whatever reason, and we saw Megyn Kelly's behavior. You know, uh, Fox News is Barbie doll. We saw how she reacted at about 2 in the morning uh, Central Time with uh, Donald Trump's going to be the next president of the United States. We don't know how he'll govern. It's like, well, it doesn't matter, sweetheart, it's over. He won the election. We'll impeach him. We don't agree with this. Well, who is it that didn't impeach, that, that wants to impeach him? Well, the ones who lost. So I, I really don't know what you can do for these people. They, they won't accept the uh, election. Not everybody that I talked to was happy when Obama got in there, not once but twice, but certainly we didn't see this kind of blowback. And why is that? Well, I think it's because there wasn't any Soros money to throw around. That that would be one thing for sure. Wasn't any Soros money to throw around in uh, any kind of a staged uh, blowback uh, to the election of Obama, whose background is clouded in mystery. And um, it's interesting. What uh, like I just uh, wrote an article recently about having gone back to I want to say it was Columbia. And instead of of his graduating class, he was in the graduating class with with Obama, whatever year it was. And um, he said not one person there professors nor students ever met him, talked to him, or even knew who he was. So, uh, going back to that whole thing that, well, you know, when we were talking earlier about uh, conspiracy theories and so forth, a lot of this stuff is, um, conspiracy theory is a derogatory term used to ridicule people who do not accept the, um, the, the, the narrative, the established narrative that the they, with a capital T, want you to go along with. But when these conspiracy theories turn out to be actual conspiracies, it's fun to watch the uh, the naysayers uh, hush their mouths, to put it in, in an ultimately civil manner. You know, it's funny, Vault 7, right? For us conspiracy guys, none of this is news. But for the other half of the population, it's this is shocking information. Well, yeah, look, it's... Here's the thing. The NSA... All powerful, all seeing, all recording, all knowing, records everything, email, fax, landline, cell line, whatever, any form of, of uh, communication you have other than maybe, I don't know, carrier pigeon, maybe U.S. mail, maybe. Uh, if it's electronic, they've got it. They know where you live. They know where you are. Uh, they can uh, they can drone you if they want to. They're, they're, uh, they, can, they can tell their buddies down in the drone office or whatever that, that um, Joe was right over here. And uh, they'll be able to land something right on your head. Well, so do if that's true, I mean, it's either true or it isn't. Either the NSA is the all-seeing, all-knowing uh, intelligence collection agency where human communications are concerned, as well as human movement uh, via the uh, smartphone, GPS, and all of that. They're, those things are very accurate. Or they're not. So... I mean, let's just take it another direction just momentarily. So do we think that the NSA had Hillary Clinton's emails from her private email account, which wasn't an account. It was a server. The only reason that you have a server is so you can make sure that anything that goes into the trash goes into the trash and, and never comes out again. You, you have your own server because you want absolute control over what happens with your email content. So where Vault 7 is concerned, either... The NSA knows everything and is spying on everybody, or it doesn't know everything and it's not spying on everybody. 
So if we've been told for years now that they are in fact doing this, well, maybe we should we should pay attention to that rather than going, oh, you know, that's just that's just grist for the mill. That's just news cast fodder and nothing more. Well, but it's selective. Let me give you an example of what I mean. How about this um, Secret Service agent, right? <clears throat> Secret Service agent has a laptop. Laptop just happens to contain, now this is according to the report. I didn't see the laptop. I don't know the Secret Service agent. I only know what I'm talking about, but I don't really know anything about what I'm talking about. In other words, I was not there, did not see the laptop, don't know the woman, don't know what her position was, don't know why her car was where it was, don't know why the laptop was in the cabin of the car instead of, which I presume it was, because otherwise someone would have said, well, he pulled out a crowbar and he pried open the trunk. Oh, he arrived in a vehicle and it left, and then he left on foot, and then he tossed the, uh, he, people saw him leave, somebody saw him leave with a, carrying a laptop and a, had a backpack on. Well, all right, who saw him? Uh... What was the laptop doing in the car? Who knew this woman? Why did this guy steal this? Is this supposed to be just a random burglary? So the act, if in fact it occurred, and we have no proof that such a thing even actually happened. It's a news report. The Secret Service agent lost her laptop and a backpack with some of her stuff in it. First it was, well, it had sensitive information about the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Well, and she left this thing in the car. Why? And it wasn't in the garage. Uh, didn't hear it was in the garage. Didn't hear the alarm went off. No Secret Service agent didn't run out there with her pistol or anything, waving it around at the car burglar or any of that. So is this a real thing or, it, or isn't it? Is this... Um, well, you know, Donald Trump may have people who are against him on his own Secret Service security detail. That's entirely possible. And they may carry a Secret Service badge, but they're actually CIA. Uh, or maybe they're a CIA contractor. I mean, who knows? It, it sounds to me like a a story that's been fabricated to produce an effect that is felt more by the people who are in the know about this operation than Mr. and Ms. Public out there. I mean, does this make sense? In other words, we don't even know if this actually happened. But if it did happen, it spawns a number of questions. And, and I think I, I just uh, ran through them. And it's the same thing with, um, with uh, Mr. Comey's position on things. I mean, why was it important? Uh, why was it important? And then it wasn't important. Then it was important again. I don't hear anybody asking that question. So... We get what they tell us, and then we t and, and so now, part of being an analyst in this news game is not to. If, I mean, if we want to talk about this stuff, and we don't just want to be a, just another uninformed person that is uh, now has a microphone and can influence other people, either on a conscious or subconscious level, just by just by saying something, you can put uh, stuff in people's heads. So you really kind of need to be responsible about that. So I'm the first one to say, listen, I don't know. I don't. But this is what I think. They, we only get what they tell us. So it's not enough to analyze what they tell us. The most important thing is to analyze what could they have told us but didn't or what we might have been told but weren't. There are so many ways to interpret the news, though. Yeah, exactly. Like you're saying, they may tell you for any number of reasons to misinform you, misdirect you. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be a part of a bigger story later on. Well, that's right. And maybe it's a, I mean, I can think of a number of things here. Okay, so now if, if something happens at Trump Tower, oh, I wonder if it had something to do with that laptop. Gee, I wonder if it was an inside job, you know, like the deep state, or was it terrorism, or did Vlad Putin, you know, he's a really mean guy. He's just so mean, and and he helped Donald Trump win the election. There's no proof of any of this, which is what's so nauseatingly simple about it. But uh, nobody can, can find any connection between the Russians hacking our election. W what does that even mean? What do you mean they hacked our election? W what does that mean? But these morons running around out there saying that, say, that using that that expression, and I'm talking about the morons running around. I'm talking about mainstream media, and that includes MSNBC, the the low ranking, the low uh, member on the totem pole there, uh, 
hacking the election. What are you saying that it flipped the vote for Trump? Because Hillary Clinton just sold them 20 percent of our uranium reserves, and I presume they're either going to make nuclear, they're either going to fuel nuclear reactors with that stuff, uh, or they're going to turn it into weapons of some sort. So it would seem to me it would be in the Russians' interest to have Hillary Clinton in as president and not Mr. Trump. Uh, and we didn't see any votes flip from Hillary to Trump. We saw votes for Trump flip to Hillary. So to me, uh, this is all just a bunch of nonsense. And, and I have to tell you this, and maybe this sounds a little cynical, but I have never seen such sub-juvenile behavior from so-called adults in my life. To me, this mainstream media, and, you know, Fox News, is they're, they're kind of, you know, just as sure as, a, as the, uh, the cock of the walk there in the barnyard that, that, that they've got this thing down. And if they're not careful, that ego trip that they're justifiably riding right now is liable to turn around and bite them because they're getting just a little too laissez-faire with their commentary. And, hey, everything's great. and We're just cruising along here. The only reason that they, that, that they look so good is because the other guys suck so much. Uh, that's a phrase that we used to use all the time <laughs> in the rock and roll business when, you know, we'd look at the competing station and go, well, it's not that we're that good. It's that they're that bad. Yeah, this is the greatest point, though, because uh, there are valid criticisms to be made of Donald Trump and the GOP. There are valid criticisms to be made of any human being that you'd want to put into a position of authority. I can't think of I, I, the last time I checked, Jesus did not run for president and 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 did not assume uh, the office of the presidency, and nor did he occupy the Oval Office. Everybody wants a Messiah that's just Teflon, clean, nothing sticks to him. I mean, they're just like, I mean, I just saw this big expose on Billy Graham. He's actually the devil, or something. You know, <laughs> by the time this presentation is done, it's like no one is safe. Everybody wants a Messiah. There's only one. He has not come back yet. So, so, yeah, what, what do we want to talk about Donald Trump? He's, he, uh, he just paid, uh, in 05, he paid, what, 35, 38 million something on um, income of 150 million? Okay. And that was 12 years ago. So I wonder how much dough he's made from then till now. When you get, a guy said a long time ago, and I don't remember who it was, but it was just some sage advice from... Uh, and I heard this over probably a radio channel somewhere. And he said, when you make money, you come up. You think that, you know, uh, here I am with my, my, my uh, humble beginnings. But, uh, you know, I've got the fire. I've got the fire in my belly. I've got ambition. I'm pretty smart. I've got an idea. I'm going to do this thing. And when I start making money, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to buy a big house. I'm not going to buy better clothes. I'm not going to buy a, a nice car or anything like that. I'm just going to stay at, at this level here. I'm just going to bank my cash. Nobody does this. You, it, It's almost as though you are compelled to, in the words of this person who was given the sage advice, come up. And when you start going to the places where yeah, you're not going to drive your, your, your K car over to McDonald's to have your dinner if you're if you're paying thirty eight million dollars of tax on one hundred fifty million dollars of income, that's not going to happen. You're going to eat at the nice restaurants. You're going to buy the nice shirts. Maybe you'll be frugal. Maybe you won't be extravagant. Mr. Trump is extravagant. Well, so what? Uh, it, it's almost as though and now and now there's this big thing about ah there's another dump of documents. People are are filling their clothing with their own sewage. They're absolutely apoplectic about all of this. They're incontinent. What what about? Well, because things about Donald Trump and his family and his business associates and his his connections to people in government have now been revealed. Yeah. And you're talking about Rachel Maddow waving a tax return from 2005 around three years before Obama took over. OK, so there's a big gap in intel gathering between 05 and 2017. So what is it that we, what's the big news flash here? You people are 12 years behind the eight ball of information gathering. So what are you squawking about? The answer is nobody is going to come onto a newscast and say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, it was a lovely day. Very few people died across the face of the planet. Uh, no wars have been declared. Uh, there have been no uh, no catastrophes whatsoever. So I'll tell you what, we're just going to skip the news 
And we're going to go straight to entertainment tonight, okay? We'll see you tomorrow night. Maybe maybe something bad will have happened between now and then. Nobody's going to do that. They're going to make chicken salad out of chicken you-know-what every night, no matter what it is. But this thing about if it bleeds, it leads, well, that, that comes from the old days when they would actually show on the black and white TV, you know, the, the blood splatters and pools on the ground next to the car wreck because there wasn't that much going on in the big cities like L.A. and New York. Yeah, sure. But the rest of the country, Chicago, sure, stuff like that. But but I can tell you that in Dallas, Fort Worth, there just wasn't that much going on. They had nothing to run on the news except, you know, a school board meeting or or, or a car wreck. And that, oh, they'd linger on those car wrecks. And that's where the term, if it bleeds, it leads. That's where it came from. Uh, later on, when the society got a little more sophisticated because the numbers of people uh, increased. Ah, then they were able to get away from car wrecks. You still see them every once in a while, but but it didn't lead every newscast for the sole reason that there really wasn't anything else going on that was worth burning up 30 minutes to report on at 10 o'clock at night on the news on the news show. So most of the stuff that we're hearing about, I mean, can you remember what, what was going on in the news, uh, say, three years ago today? I can't. Oh, I'm sure it was very important, though. Very important. We should be very concerned about this. Well, not really. You just, uh, in the current climate especially, it's important for everybody to just stay loose and wait. Don't be apathetic. Just don't, not at all. Uh, don't be disengaged. Not at all. I want to say it was Thomas Jefferson said this. But it might not have been. But some genius person said that a person, the, the price for your refusal to engage in politics is that you will be ruled by your inferiors. And this is very true. So stay engaged, but not passionately so, to the point that your passion is producing anxiety. And by the time you've had a couple of years of this, you're just walking on the side of your head, and eventually you're going to have to give up and turn away from it because it's just too much. It's just too much information, too much back and forth, too much uh, contradiction, can't get a straight answer out of anybody, and even if you did, you've had so many answers from so many people that you can't you can't even keep them apart. I mean, a human being really has only so much RAM on their little uh, on their little computer to deal with this kind of stuff. Eventually, just like when you mourn the loss of a of a uh, unless it's somebody like a mom or dad, you know, or, or somebody really really close, you never get over it. You just you adapt to it. But even at that point, if you're going to live your life, you're eventually going to have to return to the living. You're going to have to leave the cemetery, go visit every once in a while, place some flowers by the headstone, and then go back to the living because you're still alive. And that's what people are going to have to do where all this information is swirling around is concerned. Take it in, take a look, stay apprised, but then, you know, disconnect and go back to your life, the, the thing that you do, the thing that you love, and, uh, and, and do that. Keep up with what's going on around you. But don't let it overwhelm you, because if you if you give it a chance to, it will. And I say again, eventually what you'll do is you'll withdraw from it completely because you just can't take it. And that, and frankly, I think that's part of uh, if ever there were a psyop worth doing, it would be that overwhelm the people to the point where they just go, I've had it. I don't even I don't I don't really care what they do at that point. Then they've got us where they want us. Well, you're on the Craig Kilborn show. Those late night talk show hosts, they're having a heyday with Donald Trump. I mean, everyone's making a mint, making fun of Donald Trump or, as the kids say, throwing shade. All at the expense of Donald Trump. Believe me, we're all lining our pockets right now because it's the big story. Well, you know, I mean, what's Alec Baldwin done lately anyway? Those people will do anything out there. I mean, I think we're, um, you know, in England, they refer to them as uh, the, the latest uh, toe-sucking actress meaning they will do anything to get a camera on them and to get a few bucks in the bank. doesn't make any difference. They'll act like a lady. They'll act like a slag. They'll do whatever it takes. And uh, so it is with these people that do these programs. If Donald Trump were suddenly just not in the mix at all, what would they be talking about? What would they be making skits about? Would they be making skits about Hillary Clinton? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe would you, because they're so... You know, because they're so liberal and they pretty much have to be or they won't work. They simply will not work. I mean, conservatives in Hollywood have to stay way underground. And James Woods has said that he doubts if he'll ever work again. Um, John Voigt uh, was lucky to get five seasons out of Ray Donovan. 
Clint Eastwood. Um, you know, people were saying he couldn't act and his Adam's apple was too big and everything else. Back when I was a kid, well, he looks to me like he did all right. So everybody's going to take a shot at somebody. And as an, an old guy said many, many years ago, I think it was 19th century stuff. Every man, uh, every man has the right to speak, speak his mind and every other man has the right to knock him down for it. And so that's what we do. Um, you know, one of the things that really impressed me was a lithograph, a, a double lithograph. And uh, the top one had all these big fat guys in, in these uh, Elizabethan uh, clothes. You know, big striped shirts with billowy sleeves, you know, and all this. And you can't get it. And there are a bunch of them around this table. And you can't get another uh, banquet component on that table. There are there are turkeys and there's, you know, roasted suckling pig and all. Oh, I mean, just fruit and all. This, the table is just laden with this stuff. And there's a skinny guy on his hands and knees crawling in to try and get a scrap. And there are two fat guys just, just kicking the heck out of him, right? The lithograph bo graph below has a bunch of skinny people sitting around a table. And there's a fish bone there and a couple of scraps of bread. And they're, you know, trying to eat something. They have almost nothing on their table. And there's a fat guy on his hands and knees sneaking in there because he's hungry. And he'd like something. And there's two skinny, emaciated guys just kicking the heck out of him, too. And that's the human being. They're going to, uh, there's always going to be conflict. And whoever presents himself as the uh, the most convenient target, well, People are going to take a shot at him or her. That's just how it is. So I, I don't care what a bunch of comedians do. I mean, how important do they think they are? And worse, how important do we think they are? I don't think they're important at all. I still watch the Three Stooges if I want to laugh. We're going to take a left turn now. What are your thoughts on Pizzagate? Are you privy to any inside information on the subject? You know, not at this point. I know that some of those people like uh, like Podesta, he's obviously a very unpleasant little man because I've seen his reaction to people as they attempt to walk up to him and talk to him. He, he looks like a, he acts like a possum that you just walk up to and, you know, they hiss and show their teeth, you know, like, this. ah, you don't want to mess with me. That's kind of what Podesta does. I have no doubt that pedophilia is rampant uh, among the... Um, among the those people who would like to think of themselves as the elites because and, and in some ways they are the elites because they have enough money that they've got, you know, they've got a judge or a governor or a senator or somebody in their pocket because they make vast uh, contributions uh, um, of money to their political uh, campaigns and they support them. And, you know, a nice check going into their uh, foundation or whatever. We'll get you some uh, We'll get you some favors. Anybody could just ask Hillary Clinton about that. You can be a you can be an ambassador to the middle of nowhere, or you know, if you got a lot of money, maybe we'll make you uh, an ambassador in the middle of somewhere. So where Pizzagate is concerned, I mean, we know that uh, Bill Clinton uh, is buddy buddies with um, Jeffrey Epstein, the uh, the pedophile pimp, and has made many trips down to uh, the Fantasy Island there to indulge in the carnal pleasures of underage women. Who knows? Maybe uh, even uh, underage men. I mean, nobody knows. So, and we know about the Columbia Hotel, and we know about uh, Henry Vinson, the, um, they called him, uh, he's, he's gay, but they called him the, the DC Madam, because he ran a call boy service. And I asked him, how many people do you reckon use call boy services? Do you know, you know what his answer was when he came on the program? About 30%. I went, 30%? And he, he says, yeah. I said, come on, Henry, I, I figured, you know, 5%, 10%. And so he goes, no, 30%. I'm like, okay. So, you know, we just go have to go back to Lord Acton. Now, some of these people may not have absolute power, but they think they do. It's like like John McCain, for example. I'm not saying he's a pedophile. I'm just saying he behaves like a man who thinks he has absolutely unlimited power. And Lord Acton said power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely, meaning totally. So... Yeah, I, I have not delved into the, the uh, Pizzagate thing because I simply don't have enough data on it. I am aware of it, but uh, all we have now is rumor and rumors of rumors and uh, some, some crazy emails and some people that like to do spirit cooking. So, Have you talked about Pizzagate on Caravan to Midnight? Are you planning on covering the subject? As soon as we have more information, but not at this time because it's all speculative. You're saying it's not established? It really isn't. There's just not enough data. All we have are the Podesta emails and uh, and and some rumors, and that's it. And this freaky artist that likes to do spirit cooking, you know. And some guy showed up with a 
I don't know. It seems like some guy showed up recently with a shooting iron, wanting to get it on with the guy who supposedly owned the the pizza place where the pizza gate was somehow it was a component there. And the guy's going, I don't know what this guy's talking about. You know, I just sell pizzas here. That's it. I don't sell children here. So there's not enough to to go near it. I'm not going near it until I'm, I know more. I just think it's stupid. I think you're just asking for it. I, there there's a couple of people I can think of right now that are that are into sensationalism. I say let them do it. You know. If you want to go out, you want to be a dumpski and go out on the clothesline and start talking about us, about a, just saying a bunch of things about stuff you don't know anything about, we'll go right ahead. I'm not going to do it. If I know something, then we'll take it to the people. Until then. Well, the mainstream media, of course, tied Pizzagate in with the fake news, as they're sure. calling it now. I would throw uh, the Sandy Hook conspiracy in with that as well. Uh, this is what, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? That it was just a, a... That the Sandy Hook never happened, that there were crisis actors... It was a false flag. Well, there are some pretty serious questions about Sandy Hook. And, um, you know, I know Wolfgang Halbig. And, and um, I mean, I've never actually met him in person, but I've had a number of conversations with him. He's come on the program many times. And uh, there are a lot of things about that Sandy Hook thing that do not look right. In fact, uh, I'll be happy to share something with your audience. So you would say then Sandy Hook is far more credible than Pizzagate? At this time, yes, because if we if we have the volume of information about Pizzagate that we have on Sandy Hook, then I'll then I'll then I'll jump into Pizzagate with both feet. Let's hear what you have on Sandy Hook. Well, the best one that will take the least amount of time is this: in the city of Newtown, <clears throat> nothing gets done without the approval of the of the first selectman. Uh, the mayor can't make it happen. Nobody can make it happen. The first selectman happens to be a woman, uh, is the one who must make the final decision. And so, uh, during a hearing with uh, video cameras rolling and their audio recorders engaged as well, uh, Wolfgang Halbig's lawyer asked the first selectman, when was the sign that said, everyone must check in, placed by the driveway of the Sandy Hook School? And the response was three days before the, the incident. The next question was, well, who placed it there? And the first selectman said, well, the Department of Homeland Security. I mean, this is recorded. We have it. Not only do we have it, but we've also duplicated it and sent it to many people. And these people do not know each other. But they know what to do if anything comes up as a result of this. And uh, somebody's going to be in a lot of trouble if they try and make any trouble for the people who recorded that stuff. Uh, in the meantime, there's a kid named Jonathan Reich who tried to contact the medical examiner there just to talk to him and wound up with this Mickey Mouse um, misdemeanor telephone harassment charge, which is a $500 fine, right? Well, he spent $50,000 so far. They transferred him to Rikers Island and then extradited him. Nobody does an interstate extradition on a misdemeanor. Nobody. But they're doing that to this kid. And um, and so and all he did was ask some questions and never did talk to the guy. He wasn't calling him up and calling him a bunch of names and threatening anybody or any of that. He's just a, he's just a, he was just interested. He just wanted to call and ask some questions. And then you've got the condition of the school and you've got the fact that uh, as is usually the case, the crime scene has been destroyed now. And you've got the whole thing about the mortgages being paid off on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or something like this, and and just. Uh, if there's nothing to hide, why is it that anybody who's interested in looking into this incident immediately gets followed by a bunch of cops? Why? All Wolfgang Halbig has said is, just show me something. Show me the, the parental permission slips that allowed those 26 children to go sing at the Super Bowl, the Sandy Hook Choir. They won't do it. Well, who are these children? They won't show them that either. And then uh, Noah Posner, as it was tragically gunned down at Sandy Hook. Okay. Well, why did he show up on a on a poster in Pakistan following a shooting of, of some kids over there? So it's like, what, he died twice, once at Sandy Hook and once in Pakistan? I mean, look, at this is, this is actually real. And the other thing is that going back to that sign out there, everyone must check in, that's that – I mean, I used to play around and and uh, and, and do a few uh, a few films here and there, and they and they do they put that that's a commonly seen sign. Everyone must check in. That's for the extras. 
Well, this was one of those orange highway signs, you know, that they put up around construction zones. It's on a little trolley with little tires on it. It's orange, and, and you can change the message on the thing and the little yellow lights that come on there. Well, when the first selectman says that the, that the Department of, of Homeland Security put it there, well, what were they doing there? Why would they do such a thing? Wolfgang went to, uh, why would this happen? He just wanted the, the dash cam footage of um, of one of the deputies that was supposed to have, uh, one, one of the policemen there at uh, at Newtown that was supposed to have responded to this thing. So that first of all, first they give him the wrong ones. So he goes round and round and round and round with these people. So he finally gets the ones that yes, yes, but there are no timestamps on them. So he flies to Arlington, Texas, which is situated between Dallas and Fort Worth, and goes to the company that actually makes the dash cams. And says, can you pull the timestamps off of these? And they go, yeah, sure. So he sits around for about two hours, and they finally come out, and, and uh, they got the, this, these stern looks on their faces. He said, did you get them? He goes, yes, uh, yes, the timestamps are on there, and you need to leave right now, or, or we're going to call 911. Now, why would they do this to a 70-something-year-old man who's just sitting there on his backside waiting for them to just get the timestamps off of these discs? It's just stupid. They're, they're trying just a little bit too hard to protect the integrity of these of these children or whatever. They will not release the names of the children. They will not release the parent. They won't show him anything that to substantiate any Sandy Hook choir members going to the Super Bowl. And then when they went up to, I want to say it was Yankee Stadium, a few months later, it was another 26 children that went up there. Can't get any information on them either. But this has happened repeatedly, just like this uh, Boston bombing marathon thing. You notice that every time someone was either killed or they lost a leg, not a knee or a testicle or an eyeball or an elbow or something like that. It's always a leg that they lost. So here's this woman with her boyfriend who sounds extraordinarily effeminate. And he's on the phone saying, make the fireworks stop because she's all upset. She is mooing like a like a wounded cow. Because she's upset because the fireworks are going off. And this must be uh, bringing up uh, the horrific memories of the Boston Marathon bombing, right? Even though the Boston Globe ran a story about them running an exercise that was going to simulate uh, an attack like that, either the day before or the week before or something. There's always a drill just before one of these these incidents, it seems. It's just a heck of a coincidence. Well, the problem is, is that this woman is using her little smartphone to, to video herself in her emotional agony. And that doesn't really look good to me. And then there's the guy rolling down the street. He's, oh, his head's sort of tipped to the side. I'm being taken to see a medic because I've been wounded in this horrific bomb blast. There are his little shattered shin bones hanging down as he's being rolled down the street in his wheelchair. Well, there are several problems with this. Number one, the, the least of which being uh, shattered shin bones don't look like that. I mean, these look, this looked like, you know, those little broom looking things that people put around a, a, a Thanksgiving um, a table setting, like it's a primitive broom from a pilgrim's house or something. Uh, the, this, and you know, you see the, the bristles on the broom kind of bending outward. Well, this is the way this guy's legs look. If you look closely, you could see the caps of the, of the, of the prosthetic on his knees so that these, these shin bones can stick down. Number two, he's upright in a wheelchair with no legs. This takes practice. You can't just sit in a wheelchair with no legs or you will promptly fall out of the wheelchair onto your face. The other thing is, he's conscious. I don't know about you, but if I was being rolled down the street after just having my legs blown off and they're just shattered little splintery things hanging down there like that, I would probably have passed out. In fact, I may have even died from shock. Uh, nobody knows that they're going to die from shock. They just do because they've been subjected to, well, shock. You know, John, I cut the end of my finger off three months ago. Yeah, how was that? Oh, it hurt. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I almost passed out from that. Yeah, well, the other part, brother, is that he wasn't bleeding. Now, how the hell does a guy, excuse me, get roll himself down the street? I think someone was assisting him, but I just remember him. But let's say there was somebody pushed him down the street, which, by the way, he made two passes. Shin bones are shattered. No blood conscious, 
upright in the chair. And then there's a picture of him sitting around with some other guys who had lost their legs, and they're all in military uniforms, and that looks a lot like Afghanistan. And that does look like movie scope, uh, movie, uh, mo movie smoke. And they, sh and they, uh, oh, the, yeah, the guy that they, that they uh, shot up in the boat, he took time to write a, a uh, suicide note or a, or a farewell note of some kind in the boat. It, it was insane. See, the thing about it is, you go back to Shakespeare with the me think you pro me thinketh you protest too much. It's like mm, me thinketh you try to cover up a little bit too much. I mean, all you had to you just had to put just a layer of icing on the cake. You didn't have to just get four or five tubs of icing and just put it on that cake to where where's the cake? It's all icing. It's all cover up, and no, um, literally, it's all cover up and very little cake uh, proportionately. So, or proportionally. Um, so here's the thing. One gun grab after another. One terrorist alert after another. You know who, you know the stock, which stocks went up after every attempted gun grab, every threat of a gun grab? Firearms and ammunition. Smith & Wesson, Olin, oh, name one, all went up. Well, there was a report within the last week that firearm sales are down stocks are down 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 because there's no gun grab scare everybody's nobody's running out to buy a three thousand dollar ar-15 that before the gun scare you could buy a bushmaster for about 600 to get a nice colt for i mean all kinds of tricked out for pff, somewhere between 912 now these these um, you get a gun grab scare now they're going for 2500 3000 more than that sometimes well guess who owned a lot of those stocks people in Congress. And rumor has it that the president himself had some of those stocks as well. And by the way, where did he make all that money? Nobody, nobody, to me, nobody is asking the right questions. Maybe they've got more sense than I do. It's like, don't ask that question. They'll chop your head off if you keep asking questions. Okay. Wolfgang Halbig started on the Sandy Hook thing because two, he was a Florida state trooper and a national school safety expert who would advise various schools around the country on uh, how to how to uh, manage emergencies. What, and he's German. He was born in Germany. He's a naturalized U.S. citizen. And they ticked him off. He had two Florida State Troopers come to his house. No, pardon me, that's wrong. They were homicide detectives. And they said... Uh, they're going to arrest you if you keep asking questions. Now, why would homicide detectives show up at Wolfgang's house to tell him that Connecticut is going to have uh, him arrested if he doesn't stop asking questions? I don't know either. Why did Governor Malloy say right there? I mean, you can see this. Well, the FBI had advised us that uh, something like this might happen and then denied saying it later. And uh, his son, by the way, was convicted of, um, well, he was charged, I want to say with armed robbery and something else involved in a drug deal. And he got some $2,500 fine and was released on his own recognizance. But this Jonathan Reich kid went to Rikers Island for at least a month and possibly longer than that because he called the medical examiner and just wanted to talk to him about what happened up there, and that was it. I mean, it's insane. It really is. Now, when we get this this kind of information, this quality of information from people, and, and I sent my own crew up there to look around, just, you know, if this is Bravo Sierra, then tell me, because I'm not going to pursue this. If this is a snipe hunt, I'm not doing it. And they came back and said, mm, it's pretty weird up there. It really is. And we got a lot of footage, and we do. So, like I say, we duplicated it, and, and it's uh, it's squirreled away in a bunch of places where none of it can be can, – the body of work in total cannot be recovered. It simply can't. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on here that's phony, and it's all aided and abetted by the police. Look, here's here's one more thing on Sandy Hook, and then I'll let it go, all right? I was watching the news helicopter. I saw this while it was happening, and this is what I saw. Now, people will say, and I agree, that and judges know this who have uh, who have uh, presided over criminal cases that eyewitnesses are sometimes the very worst witnesses because 
they were not debriefed immediately, and what happens is they cease to recollect and they rationalize what must have happened rather than recollect what actually did happen. So I knew this while I was watching because I thought, mm, there's going to be more to this. Watch and see. And there's WABC. The news copter is on the job. And what do we see? We see this guy in a black hoodie. So the, the cops have got him on the ground. And the next time I see him, he's in the front seat of a police car. Now, keep in mind, there's just been this big shooting at the school. And a guy in camo pants and a black hoodie has just been apprehended by the police. And he's in the front seat of the police car, really. When have you ever seen a suspect of stealing a, a, a pack of gum get put in the front seat of a police car? How about never? So he looks out the window at the TV reporter's camera and says, I didn't do it. To which most people would respond, uh, you didn't do what? I still didn't. Okay, gotcha. You can go. Now, if you look for that video now, you will not find it. What you will find is a, a guy, a, a blonde-haired guy is going, yeah, he walked by with the cops a while ago, and he just looked at us and said, I didn't do it. I saw this guy in the police car. Look out the window of the passenger front seat and say, I didn't do it to the TV camera. So, number one, since when does a suspect of any kind sit in the front seat of a cop car? And number two, when does a suspect get to address a TV camera, particularly after a bunch of children have been murdered? I don't think that's ever happened. So, um, no, he was just out there with the other guys. There were supposed to be two of them. Then, of course, there's the whole that's about, I don't know, you could just hold your palms, your hands facing each other in front of you, about the width of your torso, maybe a little more, and then maybe two-thirds of that high. And this is a hole in the uh, in the plate glass at the front of the school that all of these SWAT guys are supposed to have gone in. No. It's, it's, just, it's just nonsense. It's, it's really just stupid. Look. This is the same thing. Do you remember the Benghazi incident? Of course you do. Remember how, how Christopher John Stephen was supposed to be a gay and all this other stuff? Remember that? Well, one of the people that I interviewed on Caravan to Midnight is a, a young woman named Lydie Denier, Chris Stevens' fiance, And there was a, a total smear campaign against him. Uh, she has written a book called A Voice for uh, J. Christopher Stevens. Yeah, I, I had his name wrong. It's J. Christopher Stevens. A voice for him. The same thing with that. There's Hillary Clinton. It's about a video that we had nothing to do with. She makes me sick. She, to me, she's just a swine in a pantsuit. Um, well, did you ever see that video? It's the most stupid video you have ever seen in your life. I mean, this is just, it's just stupid. It's poorly produced. They look like they're floating over some some really bad animated uh, some animated desert scene, and they're just kind of floating there. It's so, it's so stupid that only the government could have produced that video. Whatever happened to the guy who put who who produced the video? Oh, he went to jail. Maybe he's still in jail. Maybe he never went to jail. But one thing's for sure. We know now that it was not a video that had anything to do with all those people getting killed, our ambassador murdered, and all those weapons, which is what this was about. And I said it when I was on Coast to Coast AM. I said, this is a gun deal that went bad is what this is. Trust me. You're going to find out that this is this is the case. And that is the case. That That is what it was about. But uh, no, we'll leave him in jail because he, we arrested him because he made a video mocking Islam, which resulted in the death of our ambassador. So they just let this poor sap just sit in jail, even though his video had nothing to do with anything. There are videos all over YouTube uh, debunking the uh, peaceful nature of the, uh, the religion of Islam. But those people aren't in jail. But this guy is because he was singled out as the one that caused Ambassador Stevens to be killed along with those seals and contractors and it's just stupid, you know uh, You know these private communications it, look in the final analysis. This is why You have to go back to the Bible if you want to find out what's really going on a lot of people roll their eyes at that But I'm telling you you're making a mistake if you do 
because I have been the most cynical individual on earth. I didn't have, uh, well, I had almost an Alvin York moment, if you've ever seen that one, when, uh, you know, he's riding his mule in the rain and gets hit by lightning and the mule get, is knocked unconscious and his rifle is smoking that he was holding and, and, um, Mule, Mule wakes up and he's okay. Alvin's not dead. And he winds up going to, into a battle in World War I. By the time it's all over with, he's smoked, I don't know how many German soldiers. And that was a real story. Uh, one guy is marching a couple, 300 German soldiers, uh, take, took them as prisoners because they were just going, if they could all shoot like this, we don't want any of this at all. No, no, no we're, we're giving up right now. Well, that did not stop him from going to war just because he found the Lord did not keep him from living the life of a man who was put in a position to go to war. And by doing this, how many lives of his own men, his, his own comrades, did he save? And in fact, though he shot a bunch of, of, of German soldiers, and he did, and those guys didn't want to be shot either. Nobody, want, nobody but a psycho wants to go to war. But how many, the, how many German lives? Did he save by by putting on such a horrific display of marksmanship that they just went, we're not doing this, we're giving up, let's just quit. So, in the end, yes, he took some lives, but he also saved many, many more. And that's just the way it is. But look, you cannot, this is the way I really see it. It's uh, I've lived a pretty secular life over the years, to put it mildly and as diplomatically as I can. But I gave all that stuff up because it began to dawn on me that as I became more aware of the things that were going on around me and the way people behaved and the, and, and all of the, uh, the dignified and, and respectable people who, who seem to be that way, but later on you find out they're really not that way. And they have uh, proclivities that you would never guess they have. And they conduct themselves in ways that you would never think they would. And, oh, John Kennedy was such a bad guy. You know, he's a Catholic and he's got his hairs too long and, and he's uh, an adulterer and all that. Somebody declared to somebody near and dear to me, my dear departed mother, well, so-and-so had an affair. And my mother <laughs> looked at this woman and said, oh, for God's sakes, honey, what man hasn't? Which was her way of saying humans are humans. They go out there and they, and they mess up. But there is nothing that can explain the way that people can so impassionately not even cold-bloodedly, just indifferently, sit there, you know, chewing on their, their Taco Bell burrito while they push a button and kill a suspected terrorist along with women and children and some other men that were at a wedding party, for example. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that not everybody can kill like that. So, and what do you see on TV? Sex, sex, violence, 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 sex, 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 more sex, now gay sex, now, oh, now gay kids. And then you get all these idiots out there that uh, bless them that they uh, they want to they want to do another women's march and it's headed up by a terrorist who uh, was responsible for killing two Israeli kids that, who were at the grocery store they lost their lives. Then she gets into the country in 2004 by lying about it, and then I want to say in 2014 uh, she was busted for it, but said you know she was suffering from PTSD at the time that she told those lies. So she managed to hang around long enough to, uh, I believe, go ahead and uh, and complete this uh, this latest women's march. You got Angela Davis, uh, who was uh, I don't know she, she was involved in some sort of a gun deal that wound up getting a couple of cops killed or, or something heinous like this. And uh, this character Bill Ayers, why are these people still operating? Well, the thing about communism is to have a successful communist country, you must take God must become the the party ideology there's no room for god or a higher power in that the state is the highest power the state has the power of life and death over you and that's just the way it is <clears throat> why would it why should it be necessary to, to smuggle bibles to people who have no hope whatsoever but find it if they read scripture if you look at Revelation, you will see that some of the things depicted by John, who people thought was crazy as hell, well, a third of your oceans are being poisoned right now. Don't hear anything about Fukushima except 
Except uh, oh, they're still working on it, but they what they don't tell you is they can't even get a robot in there. It's so hot because it keeps breaking down. Now, now uh, guys like yourself, guys like myself, and some of the women out there in the field that are doing the doing the work. Uh, they um, they're aware of it. Arnie Gunderson's aware of it. Nuclear engineer. Uh, he was uh, behind the expose on that whole Three Mile Island thing. <laughs> Years ago, there was a report on Coast, and I read it. And I said, I assure you that there's more than one meltdown. They've probably all melted down. And uh, don't wonder if it's going to go China syndrome. That stuff's real hot. It's going to go right through the ground. It will burn through it. How's it burn through the ground? Mm. Well, look at some of the pictures of Henry Ford's first automobile factory. You got a pile of dirt at one end and a model A, B, or T rolls out of the other end. You know, you put the dirt into the big smelters and you heat them up and then the slag separates from the iron ore, you strip off the iron ore and then you start working that and it turns into a car. It's the same principle. You get the dirt hot enough and it simply melts. Uh, sort of like lava. You know, when it's cool, it's hard. Well, when it's hot, it's not. It's liquid. And that's what's happened. Well, not only did they melt down and not only did they melt through, but the report was, it's been three or four years ago now, that it also also melted out, and they found a little piece of the core in Norway. Well, about three weeks ago, certainly no more than four, United States Air Force dispatched its nuke sniffing aircraft. It's either a Hercules or a, or a, I can't remember if it's a jet or if it's a or if it's a prop driven plane. But in any case, it is designed to do one thing, and that is sniff for nuclear material. And where did they send it? They sent it to Norway. So it's possible that another piece of core has melted out, or they're sniffing the same piece of core that already melted out. But in any case, uh, hundreds of tons of highly radioactive water is going into the sea, and there's all kinds of dead sea life up and down the West Coast, and nobody says anything about it. So if you want to find out what's going on and why it's going on, go to your Bible. And just get past all the these and thous and this and that and the other and just get the point. I recommend to everybody, all you have to do if you want to find out what a, what a, oh, but these Christians, they're just awful people. Just go to Matthew. It'll take, it won't even take you an hour. Some of the chapters aren't even a page long. And just comfortably sit and actually read it. Don't glance over it. Just read it. The first 10 chapters of Matthew, that's all you got to do. It will not hurt you. In fact, it will help you. There is not one word in those chapters that condemns you, that accuses you, or anything else. Christianity and Christ himself did not accuse anybody. That's the enemy, otherwise, otherwise known as the devil or Beelzebub or Satan or whatever you want to call him. He's the accuser. And people don't get that. All these judgmental Christians... Just like these uh, these people that are these idiots on the left that are calling other people Nazis. Well, you're socialists. You, you, you've self-identified as socialists. And you're the ones who are rioting in the streets, destroying other people's property, demanding that a legitimate election is just not legitimate enough for you, but you're calling other people Nazis. Now they talk well, about burning books, banning what they don't like. Yeah. Well, they're the Nazis. The hypocrisy is unbelievable. Yeah. And... The thing about it is, once you once you understand that they don't call Satan the father, the father, not a liar. They call him the father of lies. Oh, wow, that's cutesy. No, it's not. It's deadly, deadly serious. He lies about everything. Oh, this this guy, I always pick on him all the time, um, every chance I get. Dr. Lawrence Krauss, he wrote a book years ago called A Universe from Nothing. Yeah, I, I've, I've talked to you about this before. I, I've, I've interviewed Lawrence Krauss. He's been on my show. Yeah, how'd that go? He's a bit of an asshole, I'll be honest with you. He's taciturn, right? No, he's an arrogant um, yeah, he's individual. very arrogant. But uh, well, I think he's a poor know. scientist too. That's just my opinion. But but you you have. But we talked about that book, A Universe from Nothing. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. I, I wish you would cut me off because if you don't, I'll just keep talking. But um, but but here's the thing. He wants to make it sound like oh, the universe was just so cool it invented itself. Well, how subjuvenile is that? 
That's right in there with, if you kill enough of the non-believers, we'll give you 70-some-odd fresh women, never been touched, and they'll be all yours. You can just party on them however you want. And, you know, all you have to do is read the rest of the Quran to see how, you know, to see the, the, the place that women occupy in your life. So you'll be able to abuse them at will. Just do whatever you want. 72, 74, 76, something. I mean, over 70 for sure. It's as ludicrous as that. So my position is, who would believe such a fable as either Krauss's or Mohammed's? Well, some people do. And if you don't go along with it, they'll kill you, just like these idiots. They're people. both examples of extremism, you're saying. Well, that's right. And, and, and now these kids, aided and abetted by George Soros with his deep pockets, among others, now they're out there doing the same thing. They're, they're pushing a, a completely stupid ideology, but, they are, but it is their religion. If you walk up to any of them, ask if they believe in Jesus, tell, tell me what they say. I bet you a hundred bucks they'll tell you, no. That's all BS. Well, it's not. But they'd probably think Jesus was black. Oh, they think he's black. They think he was gay. They think he was a woman. They think this. They think that. They think the other. They, they don't, the problem is they, they haven't learned anything. They have not learned anything. They just hear and repeat. But keep in mind that uh, a recent, uh, there was a study conducted, and one of the caravanners told us about it. It was his personal experience. That at the end of the day, about 10% of the people. Some have said eh, 15, let's say 15, 15 out of a hundred people max are capable of independent thinking. The rest of them are not. Now they can be trained to think independently. They can, but they're not in a position to the behavior follows the culture. People can talk about culture all they want. But if you want to see the culture, look at the behavior who embrace or who are a part of the culture. And then you then you'll see then you'll see things that you may not want to see, but but you'll understand both the culture and the behavior. And you can if you look at it closely enough, you'll see the origins of it and and uh, and the causes of those origins. So they're not necessarily the same thing. Listen, you you're saying that uh... The kids aren't learning anything. No, they're... But we're not meant to learn anything. Everything is an advertisement. I want to tell you about something. Yeah. I had Rachel McIntosh on the show recently, and she worked for L3 Technologies. That's one of the major weapons manufacturers. Oh, yeah. And her job was to campaign to television programs to get their technology into the show. So shows like CSI 24, those are showcases for not yet used technology, prototypes, stuff in development that they're pitching to congressmen and senators and they'll say well just watch the latest episode of 24 and you can see it used in application everything in these shows is an advertisement for something we may have had her on the program but but i would have trouble remembering that only because we're at over 700 now and most of those shows have two guests on there so i mean i can't i truly i can't keep up with all of them which is why i like sherlock holmes who was a fictitious character, but his stories yielded some good things. I I'll go to the records and look. There's no point in trying to memorize everything when you can go over and look it up. Just keep the tools that you need to do the job in your head and keep that RAM freed up to do that. And then if you need to do some research, go back and look at the archive and see, see what's up. But there was a program uh, that was quite successful. It, I think they ran for, I want to say, 10 years. They call it MI5 over here, if you could see it over here, usually on public television is where they ran it. And that was probably the only thing on public television I ever watched. I came across it quite, quite accidentally. It was called Spooks um, in uh, England and in Europe. And it was about MI5. Well, uh, they were talking about um, being able to put messages on people's computer screens. They would do that, uh, looking through people's cameras, uh, about a cloud of radiation that can be read from the street. But there's another thing that you can do to your own computer, which is put a cloud of radiation over your own screen. Because if you don't have that cloud, people that have the, the, the right technology, uh, or the right, it's not technology, ology is the study of something. So if they have the right tech, the, the right technical devices, they can be sitting in a van across the street and see everything that you're seeing on your screen, they can see. If you put this cloud over it, they can also see that you've put a cloud over it. If you've put a cloud over it yourself, so they can't see what you, 
that so they cannot see what you're seeing on your computer then they're thinking well that's pretty serious tech for somebody to have considering that we're only looking at them for a little bit of possible embezzlement and this guy's got this kind of tech mm, i think we better look closer because uh, this guy should not even know about this stuff let alone have it and it was revealed on a television show i mean i've had a piece of tape over my camera since 2001 you know because they, they can look through that thing anytime they want and now it's like oh the samsung smart tv when you shut it off john mcafee was on uh was on Art Midnight. We do Caravan to Midnight Tuesday through Friday, and then on Saturday night between 10 and Midnight Central, we do Art Midnight, and you can hear it on KLIF 570 AM uh, over the radio, over iHeart or whatever, or you can just go to KLIF.com, or uh, better yet, because it would help us, as uh, you can see it on our YouTube channel. Well, McAfee's on there, and he's saying, everything that you do, if you have ever looked at, uh, he goes, I realize most people have it, but if you have ever looked at any site that even remotely resembles pornography, your system is loaded up with all kinds of stuff. Every keystroke that you make, every site that you visit, every they have everything. Now, at the end of the day, the human being is the weak link in the chain. The tech vastly outpaces. It's just like having a, 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 the new MacBook Pro. I mean, that thing will do a lot more than I'll ever be able to do with it because I don't, I only want it to do the functions that I want it to do and, and I'm not really interested in any of the other things that it can do. But this thing is a hundred times more capable as a, as a machine than I am as a machine operator. And, and that's what we need to understand. While we've been sleeping, focusing on the more base uh, aspects of our existence, namely food, comfort, sex, and ego supporting things like, I don't know, nice cars, nice houses, whatever. Uh, those of us who have, have uh, not gone with the platonic thing of uh, food, shelter, and clothing, uh, anything more being a perversion. You know, Plato was probably pretty square, but I think he was always, I think he was also correct because. Uh, Leisure time used to mean you got away from your job long enough to think about the higher things in life. It didn't mean lie on your backside, sipping drinks with little hats in them. It, uh, it meant you were studying, you were reading, you were learning about your world, you were experiencing things that were worth experiencing. The whole purpose of philosophy is to discover what makes a good life, one worth living. Most people are not living lives that are worth living, and many of them would agree with you. I uh, would agree with that. So... While we've been pursuing those things, those who want to control us just keep feeding us the stuff. They keep giving us those candy bars. Yeah, they like those candy bars. Give them some more. Well, we're being fed a daily dose of fear. Fear and and we're being told, I mean, they've kind of backed off on this a little bit, but, but not entirely. Uh, what you need to have in your life, the symbols that make you, you, the way you dress, what you drive, where you go, how you live, where you live, what your house looks like. You know, um, in the 90s, it was all about t telling the women that you can uh, make a baby, you can make a cake, you can run a corporation, and you can still come home and knock your husband's socks off. Well, there's just no time for everything. You either have a, you either raise a child and make a home, or you go run your corporation. I mean, a perfect example is these idiots out in Malibu. They're not all idiots. It's about split 50-50. Uh, they, want, they want to become a sanctuary city, even though it's a, it's really a moot point because, you know, L.A. County handles everything. That, that, that's a problem from the jails right on down the line. But this one guy said, in, oh, we'd be paralyzed if, you know, all these Mexicans were deported. Uh, there wouldn't be anybody to clean our homes. I mean, I'd like to smack this guy across the face with a sock full of wet horse manure. And just go, why don't you clean it yourself? Why, why don't you clean it yourself, you lazy pig? What are you so special? What, do you grace the earth by your birth? So now you're a little king, and you've got serfs that'll do your work for you? You're just a lazy, lazy piece of manure. You know, but can't really do that, number one. You know, you'd be in a brawl with a guy. But the worst part of it is he wouldn't understand why you were speaking to him that way. He's that eaten up with himself. So we have abandoned what made us 
a decent country to begin with. You don't have to say we were a great country. What does that mean? Well, we're great and they all suck. Well, that's just not the case, you know, but we were a decent country and we weren't perfect people, but we were trying to build a good life. And we had, as it's found, oh, we accommodated all the other religions. The only reason they put in that stuff about separation of church and state is because they didn't want another Henry VIII making his church in England so he could uh, divorce, what's her name, and, and uh, uh, yeah, divorce Catherine and, and uh, marry somebody else, you know, because Catherine couldn't have kids. I mean, Henry VIII produced the Church of England so that he could get a divorce because the Pope wouldn't give him one. So... That's what that's all about. Oh, you can't say it. But you're defending immigration, basically the the philosophy of immigration. I'm not. To, uh, well, no, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm defending the philosophy. I'll, of, I'll defend it to the death. What people have a problem with is coming to the country and seeing it as a welfare opportunity. No, I don't. Well, I, I can see how you might have arrived at that conclusion. But no, I'm a uh, if you want to come to the country, bring something to the country. As far as we're a nation of immigrants, like, yes, that's true, but that was for that started uh, 400 years ago, and we're full right now. And what we need are people who will help us maintain the civilization, not people whose sole stock in trade is need. And they talk about, you know, the blacks just can't get enough of the slavery stuff. Not all of them. There are a lot of them who are with the program. We have a lot of, of uh, black people that are... are um, that are members of Caravan to Midnight, and they totally agree. They they send me uh, they they send emails and attest to it like almost every day. But it's like nobody experienced slavery like let's see how about the Irish? They built the entire New York subway system in the 1800s by hand, and it still exists. They don't use it anymore. You know, it's kind of old now. But uh, but they built it, and those were some seriously indentured people. Well, here in Canada, the Chinese built the railway. Exactly. They built the railroad here, too. These kinds of situations have happened in every society on the planet. Well, that's it. And, and uh, you know, I had a conversation. Some guy, black guy just invited me, and he was decked out in sort of, you know, the height of gangster uh, attire. And I was at Mel's on Sunset. This is years ago. And he said, um, I was sitting by myself, and he was sitting by himself. He says, come on, why don't you come sit with me? I said, okay. So we started shooting the breeze. He just wanted to talk to me. He just kind of picked me out. And eventually he said something about slavery. And I said, man, I don't know what it's like to be a black man. There but for the decisions that God Almighty was the angriest black man who ever walked. I said, but I'll tell you what I would do. I would look at what I had going on ones who've got as little going on as I do now, because there's plenty of white ones that don't have any more going on. They have less going on than what you're doing. you got to take this color thing out. And get with the program of the people that have got a program that's working, and try to emulate that program. You will not be able to duplicate it, because you are an individual. You can, you can run a program like that, but it will be unique, because you are doing it. You don't have to be a robot. Okay? But the rest of it is, you need to cut the slavery thing loose, man. There is nobody alive now who had anything to do with slavery at all, would not own slaves if they could. Unless, of course, it was a sex slave. Or they're, oh, yeah, there are a lot of people like that, you know. Freaks, they're, they're freaks, but they, they still do it. But the, the slavery that you're talking about, that's over with. Nobody today would even put up with that. I have a question from the audience here. This yep. is Jorge Noriega. Hey, Jorge. Why are Americans such unorganized pussies? No one is organized but the criminals whom the government is a part of, not the other way around. Well, you know, Jorge, is that his name? Yes. Jorge, that's a damn good question. It really is. In my opinion, they've uh, the American male is split into three groups. you got hand-holding fairies. You've got brutes. And in the middle are the people that are trying to hold the culture together. And that's really true. The problem is, it's the money. See, the ones who are opposed to uh, this, the, 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 gosh, I hate to use this word because it's just become hijacked and it's like tainted now. But people know what I mean when I say conservative. Conservative used to mean 
or means supposedly means now limited government and you know every, and everybody can just kind of freelance a little bit that's what liberal used to mean you're, you're actually listening to the to the liberal that the left lost we wanted get the government out of our lives stop involving us in undeclared wars don't let this police department run all over us don't tax us to death and stay out mind your own business and just keep the country safe and leave us alone that's what a liberal used to be well now that's what a conservative is now so the guys who are so the left flanks moved over to the right and the right flanks move over to the left okay now that aside the people who are actually holding this damn thing together are busy holding it together we don't have time to go out and destroy other people's property and more to the point our mindset is even if somebody like a george soros was to show up and try and fund that kind of activity we would not be players for it so uh let me ask you a question jorge why are mexicans such disorganized pussies that you would allow your country to descend into the poop hole that it is today run by a few families and backed up by a military that'll kill you if you get too mouthy just like they whacked out all those students that are found in mass graves Okay, there are a few of you out there on the border. There certainly are who decided, we're not waiting for the cops. We're going to take on these cartels ourselves. And even though they're not supposed to own AK-47s and things like that, they do. And they've got their little uh, section of uh, turf cordoned off, and there is no cartel activity around there. Uh, which uh, which disorganized pussies are allowing women to, you know, with their intestines hanging out, hanging upside down from bridges, while uh, 50 yards away, uh, some little Mexican boys are playing soccer. If you can answer that question, I'll talk to you some more. But let's put it this way. Until we decide that we're really not capable of anything outside of being enabled to do anything by God Almighty, praise him in the name of the Lord Jesus, until we decide that we just can't really handle this thing without help, without being enabled, Nothing's going to change. I'll ask you one more question. Over the last 10, 15 years, have things gotten better or worse locally and globally? Better or worse? I would submit to you they've gotten worse. So, and by the way, folks, pussy is uh, has nothing to do with uh, anatomy. Pussy is an expression that is short for the word pusillanimous, which means, by definition, Small-minded, petty, cowardly. Yes, there are lots. The world is full of pussies. Now, let's go on to something else. We have another audience question here. I like John, but his subscription-only broadcast means he preaches to the choir. Well, that's a load of the hogwash. If you want to find out what kind of hogwash that you're speaking there, just tune into Ark Midnight. That's Caravan to Midnight Light because it goes over the terrestrial airwaves, and we simply cannot say certain things over the terrestrial airwaves. Now, I think some people, sorry to cut you off, some people are concerned here that they have to pay to listen to you. Is that true? There ain't nothing free. We've got bills to pay. We've got studio equipment to buy. We've got uh, we've got bookers, administrators, people who have got a ship product. Yeah, it's an actual business. It's not Granny's Basement Podcast. And uh, the fact of the matter is the quality of the program reflects it. If you want free you can have free, and what you'll get is uh, flat earth theory and other nonsense, okay? So, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if uh, I can't think of anything that is free other than stuff on YouTube. And by the way, when you give those guys all those clicks, guess what they get in, the, get, guess what they get in their bank account? They get a little check from Google, and all you have to do is sit through the ads that get in the way and get in the way. Go to the L.A. Times sometimes and uh, the Los Angeles Times and look at their website. If you can even read a story without seeing all the ads flashed all over the, all over the screen, well, you, you, you've got my vote because I can't. I can't stay on the site more than about 15 seconds. It'll drive you right up the wall. But uh, we bring forth the conversations that people have said this. I am the only one with the courage to do this. No, you're not. I am the only one who is free from corporate influence. You are a corporation. I am the only one who is free from mainstream media. You are mainstream media. We're listener supported. We're viewer supported. Oh, really? Well, what about the several hundred million dollars that you get from the from the United States government taxpayers every year to support your left wing agenda? I'm talking to you, PBS. I'm talking to you, NPR. I'm talking to you, National Endowment for the Arts. 
you're paying whether you know it or not. Do you remember that movie Shadows and Fog that Woody Allen did? Cusick's being led into the bedroom of, of, by a little prostitute played by uh, Jody, what's her name, Foster. And um, he says, I, I, I've never paid for it before. And she says, oh, honey, you just think you haven't. You're paying for it right now. When you go and look at rubbish, you're paying for it with the most valuable thing that you have, your time. And if you're going to tell me that, well, I can't believe he's charging for this, really sit in my chair for a week and tell me if it's worth $5 a month for 700 programs already in archive. Do I sound angry? I'm not. I just tell it how it is. You want free? Go to YouTube and take your chances. You, sp you spring for 60 bucks for the year, and you don't have to – you don't have to – Pay 60 bucks all uh, up front. You can buy half a year. You can subscribe for, for three months at a time, whatever whatever your budget will allow. But you're not going to get this anywhere else. You're not. And we are so far ahead of, of the, the even, even the so-called alternative media. You're not going to see me on the website with my shirt off showing you how my, my new um, uh, you-know-what stiffener has uh, made me more virile and look at all the weight that I've lost. You're not going to see all that. The Alex Jones show has become ridiculous. I mean, he is peddling these baloney products every other minute. No, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what we sell on the sites. Caravan to Midnight started when I was on Coast to Coast AM, uh, and they they had not put me in the the uh, the regular Saturday night slot, which occurred on uh, I want to say January the seventh, two thousand twelve. That hadn't happened yet. Right after the Fukushima meltdown, I went immediately to my mad scientist laboratory to try and find my Geiger counter because I knew that stuff was headed our way that would take a while, but probably ought to you know, make some preparations. And I discovered this giant thing that I had there from the 70s. It was like, I can't carry this around. Building materials, uh, radioactive materials in cars that were built in Japan w would soon come over this way. I knew this. I don't, I don't need to wait until somebody tells me this has happened, some talking head on, on a news program. I have a brain, and I try and keep it lubed up and firing on all six as much of the time as possible. So I put this site together. It was not a fancy site. It was not an expensive site. It was a bare-bones site. And it was like, listen, all of these radiation detectors that are out there are really, really expensive and uh, there's a run on them right now. So we partnered with some people in Western Europe. We partnered with some people in Eastern Europe, and we wound up carrying some radiation, uh, some Geiger counters from the Russians. But then that supply dried up, too. And then we made friends with, uh, because he listened to me on Coast. And we bought, we we got uh, Maser instruments now, I and mean, these things are, are very cool. You can uh, plug them in, and they will record all these. I mean, you can just leave the thing on, and then go back, plug it into your PC. I don't think it works on Mac, but if you get virtual PC, I'm sure it would. Uh, there's a program to put on your Mac, so you can run Windows stuff. And it will show you the little spikes, and when they happened, and how long they lasted, how strong they were, and this and that. And in some cases, uh, exactly what kind of ionizing radiation it was. Well... Then the time came, I was sitting there in the chair at, at Coast for a couple of years, and they didn't like me talking about global communism. Well, you see it in unfolding. They didn't like me saying Benghazi was a gun deal gone bad. They didn't, they didn't like any of that. They didn't like me talking about Fukushima. They didn't like me talking about alternative media, so they simply fired me. Now, according to the reports that I got, the numbers... Now, I have not read this myself, but I got this from people who do have the numbers because I couldn't get them from the coast people at all. I asked for them. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing all right. Well, yeah, we we're doing all right. Uh, yes, we were. Uh, on Saturday night would get more listeners than the rest of the week combined. They didn't tell me that. And that became sort of embarrassing. So down the road I went. Okay, fine. Because the best thing that happened, the first best thing that happened was being hired at Coast to Coast. The second best thing was being fired from there. Because now I can do what I want. We talk to whom we wish, and we talk about whatever we want to. And if somebody comes on there and they want to make a dump scare out of themselves, they can do that. If they want to come on and make a genius out of themselves, which is what happens 99% of the time, they are welcome to do that. I do not ambush them. I do not fight with them. And I'm even hearing the, the main host over there going, you know, I'm not going to challenge anybody and argue with them. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, these people repeat stuff that I say all the time. You know, I turn coast to coast and I just start want to have some fun with it. So I called it the mothership, you know, that is coast to coast AM, right? 
uh, John B. in the left seat and all this stuff. Now I'm here and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the pilot's chair and you're going to ride right seat with me and all this. And, and then the next thing out of their mouth is how stuff that people hear on this show, we're hearing repeated, you know, by other uh, media outlets like Deep State and Shadow Governments. Like, dude, look on the scoreboard and see who's behind. You, sucker. You're years behind. So that's the thing. I'm an A personality, but I'm not an A-hole personality. <laughs> <laughs> I see your picture here, man. You're kind of a you're kind of an A personality too, you know. I like that. But I don't suffer fools easily either. So when people say, Well, I just can't believe it's not free, it's like, well, I don't feel like living under a bridge and doing a, a podcast out of out of somebody's grandmother's basement. I'm not doing it. I'm a grown man. Okay? So cowboy up five bucks a month if you want to find out what's really going on, because uh, trust me, it'll be the best five bucks that you ever spent per, on a monthly basis. Way better than the coffee that you bought from this outfit that uh, has decided to hire umpteen thousand Muslim refugees. Okay, people will pay for for Roku, but they won't. But they, you know, if it's actually good for them, they won't. What are your thoughts on the flat Earth conspiracy? Do you believe the Earth is flat? Not just no, but hell no. I know too many pilots, too many high altitude bomber pilots. Uh, I've been up in aircraft at very high altitudes myself. Hell, I've sat in the, I've sat in the navigator's chair, on a 747-400 flown by South African Airways, and we were at 46,000 feet, and 588 knots true airspeed. I made that trip many times between here and, and uh, South Africa, and I could see the curvature of the Earth. That's utter nonsense and rubbish, and more to the point. Let me tell you a story. Now, there are going to be a bunch of people that are, that are pissed off right now. And I don't normally use this language, but you dropped the F-bomb a while ago, so I figure I'll just let it loose. I'm a regular guy. I mean, I mean I'm not the oracle. I'm not a god. I'm just a, I'm just a man and nothing more. But let me tell you something. South Africa, why does he bring up South Africa all the time? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Someone very near and dear to me is from there and used to listen to me when I was over there doing a cigarette contract lasted 16 years. I probably got a body count higher than Idi Amin because uh, the primary uh, consumer of these this particular brand of cigarettes was mostly black people. It was the number one selling brand for real no kidding black Africans. Now, let me tell you what's going on down there now. While people, by the way, Obama wants to be this country's Mandela. Uh, Nelson Mandela was a murdering communist. And every once in a while, they'd let him off a of Robin Island to go and do an interview somewhere. And, oh, he's just a great guy, right? No, he's not. And those AKs that, uh, that he was using to uh, kill far more black people than white ones, even though they killed plenty of white ones, too, uh, were all Russian AKs. I know, because I saw them. Okay, I went all the way up into Angola, all the way up into Mozambique. I was in Mozambique the day that the 16-year civil war ended. Now, what's happening there? Now, follow me on this, folks. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm trying to, to, there's nothing in it for me to attract these vitriolic, foul-mouthed, cowardly, threatening, if, if you don't believe the earth is flat, then I'd like to, I, it's a good thing you're not my neighbor. I would break your legs. <laughs> yeah, sure you would. Yeah, sure you would. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Here's the deal. The people have decided that the engineers who built the water reservoirs are racist because they built them too big and they will not fill up. If they had built the reservoirs smaller, they would fill up. Now, there's some genius for you. They put signs up next to things like with a, with a, a Jolly Roger, you know, skull and crossbones that says, you know, death will result if you touch this circuit box. And then underneath it, it says $200 fine. And they mean it. I have a $10 trillion Zimbabwean note, $10 trillion. Robert Mugabe's wife, Grace Mugabe, got her Ph.D. in two months. Her name is Grace. She was asked how she got her Ph.D. in two months. And she said, by Grace, because my name is Grace. She's a genius. She said that girls have a 100% chance of getting pregnant. But boys, the percentage of them getting pregnant is less. President Zuma of South Africa. Now, the other two, Mugabe, though, that's Zimbabwe. used to be Rhodesia. Zuma can't even count. He says 401 million, 11, and 70. 
He sings songs in Parliament like We Will Kill the Boar, which is Farmer with the Machine Gun, and the black troops are out dancing little jigs out in front of the Parliament building. All you have to do is go up on YouTube. You can get that for free. Now, let me get to the flat earth. They have decided at the University of Cape Town, which hosted the world's first heart transplant performed by Dr. Christian Bernard. They have decided that all of the science is racist, and therefore all contemporary science must be abandoned because it is racist. This is precisely the model, the destruction of South Africa, and the destruction of the people who built that country. There were no black people on the Cape when the Dutch arrived. None. A few Bushmen here and there, that's it. Blacks came there because they were killing each other and or dying of starvation in between murderous rampages between each other. And under apartheid, while it was a pretty rough regime, the thing is they were protected from each other. Now it's murder everywhere. Familiar with Rwanda? No. All one has to do is just go to your favorite search engine, whatever it is. Use Google. It's pretty good. It'll track everything you do, but it still works. You're tracked anyway. You're on a list. You're on a list. There's no escape. If you're interesting in any way, you're on a list. Just look for an image of George Soros standing next to his willing dupe, F.W. de Klerk. And you'll see him standing side by side because George Soros was a driving force behind the destruction of South Africa, which is entirely communist now. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, 100% communist. You get out of line, they just kill you. That's all. Toss you over there. A government hospital in South Africa, you got two kinds. You got private, you got public. You got government. That's the public. You bring your own mattress, and you lie on the floor with pus, vomit, feces, urine, blood, and everything else. You don't have to believe me. Just look it up. This this is the truth. And this flat earth thing, now here's something else. There's another component. The firmament, the waters above and the waters below, the circle of the earth. Come on. When you stand in there on a plane and you rotate 360 degrees, you know, you all the, turn yourself around, what do you see? You see a circle. The four corners of the earth. Those are the cardinal points on a compass. Okay, nobody has believed the earth was flat since about 350 A.D. Now, the problem is that this that these lion spin doctors, and that's what they are. They're a bunch of liars and cowards, and they've pulled a bunch of people into into their thing because we've been lied to. They won't tell us the truth. And then you've got Tellinger going in Antarctica. Nothing goes on there. It's a no go zone. No, nothing can go on there. Well, that's that's BS. I think I believe seven countries have a, a little bit of jurisdiction over Antarctica. Okay, but it's a no-go zone there. Well, no, it's not. You can take a damn packet boat ride down there. Take your whole family with you if you want to. You'll love it. All right. Now, well, you know the the the, the, the you'll be interested in this. Why is the sun? Sun's rise and sunset is an illusion. No, your intelligence is an illusion. There's this thing called the Ponzo illusion. Try it out sometimes. It works. It sounds... It's a psyop, dude. It's a psyop. They're sabotaging us. Here's the deal. The next time that you see the big sun on the horizon, I mean, and it happens at different times for different reasons... But there's something going on there called the Ponzo illusion. It is, in fact, an optical illusion. If you will, I'm serious about this. It sounds absolutely absurd, but I invite you to try it. You will find that it is true. Simply bend over and look through your legs. Bend over, all the way over if you can, if you've got that kind of flexibility. Bend over and look backwards at that thing, upside down, between your legs, and you will see that the sun is exactly the same side, your size as it is when it's overhead. It, it's a thing that your brain does that makes it, it is, in fact, they are correct. It is an illusion. They just don't tell you what kind of illusion it is. It's something that's happening inside your head. Just look up Ponzo, P-O-N-Z-O, 
Ponzo illusion, and you'll see that, that, that this is correct. The other part is that we're going to have somebody on the program on the 29th of March. And at the end of that conversation, that will be the end of the flat earth theory. There's this one that, oh, he's been, he calls me Johnny B. Boy. He's just an insulting little Papa Romeo, India, Charlie Kilo, and nothing more. Uh, he looks like a psycho. I suspect he's gay and, uh, and is in love with me, and I didn't give him any attention, so now he's mad. I'm sorry about that, but not really. Um, he and this other guy, Eric somebody, they disagree with each other's theory on the flat earth. And then there's this other moron uh, somewhere on the East Coast that uh, he thinks that the uh, the moon goes around the earth. He's, he even said it on one of his videos. Now, anybody can make a mistake, but seriously, the moon goes around the earth every 25 hours. These are the sort of uh, intellectual derelicts that are pushing this thing on everybody. And here's the worst part. The human being is designed to worship. Hold with me for a minute. I'm not done. And they will. Whether you're a tree worshiper in ancient Germany, where if you injure tree bark on a tree, they will cut your belly open, remove your intestines, and wrap the wound of the tree with your guts. Those are tree worshipers. Ancient Germany. Look it up. Uh, I recommend everyone read The Golden Bough, B-O-U-G-H, by, uh, uh, by Fraser. Sir James, I think it's Sir James George Fraser. It was lying there on the table next to uh, Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now. If you're quick enough to notice that, that book was lying there. Uh, and it explains that, uh, well, many things. Uh, for example, the most certainly primitive uh, humans had one of two ways of dealing with their gods, either by persuasion or by threats. Now, the human being, high plains, sun worshiper, whatever, they're going to worship something. What the, the most heinous thing that these flat earthers do is they pull, and I mean this, good people who want the truth, who believe in the Bible. These bastards are co-opting little fragments here and there of the Bible to support their BS theory. And they are willfully deceiving people by pulling them into their jackpot by preying upon their belief in Scripture. And to me... They should have their asses kicked for this. Did I really just say that on your show? But they should. This is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. The earth is not flat. No one has ever circumnavigated the globe from pole to pole. Hmm. Au contraire, les morons. Yes, it has been done. You will find out. And after that, you will not be the same. And I get this, you know, this why this dude even thinks he has the privilege of even sending me an email. It's like, who the heck is this guy? I don't want to say his name because uh, in his mind, it'll make him famous. But I was very nice to this person. He sat there with this smug grin on his face while the guy that was with him, did, who did the actual work, uh, laid out his presentation, and it was quite compelling. But this guy has harassed us month after month, year after year, to talk about the flat earth. You're just blind. You know, then he starts attacking our faith in Christianity and and all of this. And it's like, dude, just just bleep off, okay? Uh, you, you, you're just not even worth, I'm not even going to mention your name. You, you're, just, you're, a, you're a malicious loser. You, you could actually straighten yourself out maybe learn something, some real science, but no, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to pit people against each other. Well, I got some news for you, folks. The earth is not flat. It's not. And if you talk with people who have made it their life's work to study the meanings uh, of certain passages in Scripture, and they, they do, sometimes they, they argue with each other. I mean, it's religion and politics, boy, that's a, that's a never-ending discussion, a never-ending debate. You know, temper sometimes flare over it, but nobody's nobody has the answer. But you'll do no better than the Bible. Oh, they've distorted it. If the go back to Lawrence Krauss, do you know what that guy actually said on Coast to Coast AM? He said the Bible was written by illiterate people. Now think about that one for a minute. What does illiterate mean? Well, it means you can't read or write. Well, if illiterate people wrote the Bible, Dr. Krauss, then I must say that um, it must have been divinely inspired because last time I checked, people who cannot write don't. 
<laughs> and people who cannot read don't. So this is the mentality. And I am sure that the good doctor has sold many, many books and has poo-pooed the Bible repeatedly because it was written by illiterate people. And that is a parallel to the Flat Earth Society. And I will not back down. I will not. I've had people close to me say, why don't you just talk to him? You know, you should just talk to him. It's like, I'm going to decide. You know what? I don't have all that many rights, say more and more every day. It just seemed to be taken away from us. But I've got one. And that is, I will decide who and when I will discuss something, depending on their acquiescence to come on the program. It's up to me to decide which when and if and that's just how it is i'm not going to appease these purveyors of nonsense by defiling the program and doing a disservice to the people who support me and they do caravan to midnight is supported by the most loyal generous gracious intelligent people that anybody could ever hope to have as an audience and I'm not selling them out by bringing on something that I know in advance is rubbish. If I thought there was a shred of truth to it, those people would already have been on. But it's not. It's a psyop. And part of it is to determine how many people are how gullible. They do it all the time. Look, the FBI actually hired members of the Geek Squad, the computer Geek Squad that goes around fixing people's computer problems. They actually hired some of those guys. These PSYOPs are not run from impossible missions for us headquarters where everything is high tech. A lot of this stuff is real, real low level, no glamour, not very much drama, real boring. It's not all like it's depicted in the movies. So don't think that something has to be sophisticated to be a psychological operation. That is simply not the case. I can prove it with one expression. Conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah, the expression goes back a long time, but it was co-opted and made popular by CIA as a phrase to be used to discredit and ridicule those who questioned the veracity of the Warren report. And we're still using it today, 50 some odd years later. Things like that cast a long shadow. They're like reputations. I think Keith Richards said that a reputation is like a long shadow and it's true. So is a lie that's that's um, that is manufactured at the highest levels of government. And then they're going to do the people a favor by telling them, ah, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory. Well, this flat earth thing is no conspiracy theory. It's rubbish. It's bollocks. It's nonsense. Forget it. Join Caravan to Midnight. Go ahead and chip in. Go on. Come on. We do good work. We're on the job all the time. This is all we do. Every once in a while, we'll talk with Russell Scott or we'll talk with somebody else, you know. But other than that, we're on the job. This is our work. This is our mission. And, you know, I wonder sometimes how long we're going to be able to continue to do it before somebody decides we need to shut up. But I figure as long as I don't go on the uh, the public airwaves talking about all the people that Hillary Clinton is, all the children she's, you know, slaughtered and, and, and murdered and raped and all that. I mean, I think we we'll probably get a little, bit, a little bit longer run than some people are going to. You have to exercise some modicum of responsibility if you're going to talk to a lot of people. And I got to tell you, Russell, I've been pretty much looser with my attitude and looser with my language than I think any other time, the, the whole time I've been doing any of these kind of gigs. But like I said, you dropped the first F-bomb, so I figured if, if I come up short of that, you're still the man and, and I, I could still maintain a, you know, the position of the lordly authoritative uh, commentator, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Alex Jones is funny. I met him a couple of times. I liked him all right. He he seemed uh, he seems wrapped a little bit tight, you know. I just I'm afraid he's going to explode, and I'll be standing too close to him. And I certainly don't want to be standing too close to him when any pictures are taken. Black so. chopper shop. Uh, dialed to eleven at all times, right? <laughs> just gonna... All the time. I mean, you talk about uh, this guy is just jacked up continuously. I think he's been taking that product that he sells so much that he's just bursting with manhood or something. I don't know what's going on. My chest is so manly, 20% off, I'll take my shirt off. <laughs> Let's do one last question. John Wells, what the heck is happening in Antarctica? Is there anything 
that you've talked about on Caravan to Midnight that dawns any light on this subject, because it's an extremely mysterious place. It's a continent, for fuck's sakes. There's another F-bomb, and no one knows anything about it. Well, you know, the, the fact is a lot of people know quite a bit about it, but they're keeping it under wraps. They always keep the best stuff under wraps. And while I do not know all of it, I certainly don't, I do know this much. If anything is to be believed at all, I know that the Nazis were at the cutting edge of technology, whether they got it from uh, uh, otherworldly sources or whether they're just that damn smart, I don't know, but they were on top of it. They were on top of rocketry. They were on top of uh, heavy water to make nuclear weapons. Well, they were on top of, um, they made the first cruise missile with the V-1 buzz bomb. They fielded the first operational jet, even though Frank Whittle actually invented the jet engine in 37. Uh, Ernst Heinkel was uh, released his, his jet engine uh, like a month later. It was about 30 days later. But the Germans have been on top of it, and they were into those Vortex um, uh, engines. It's very possible that they were exper they were experimenting with everything. Uh, that uh, uh, Hans Kommler, that was one serious cat. They were all very serious cats. Uh, there wasn't an element of the occult, but but the but the thing is, is that's what it is. You know, I saw this. Uh, I'm all over the place here, but if you can hang with me on this, I saw a, a brief thing. There it looked like two suns coming up, and, and it's like, oh, we must get ready to greet them. You know, it's like uh, I'm not going to be the first one to run out and greet any entity that comes in from outside our atmosphere that doesn't actually belong here, doesn't walk around on planet Earth as a fellow human being. I'm I'm not in a big hurry to do that, but. Um, this is one of those cases where I'm not interested in being first, but it might be all right to be next, but I don't think I want to be first on that. Uh, they were very interested in New Swabia land. Now, either either Richard Admiral Richard Byrd was a complete lunatic and really didn't lose all those aircraft and really didn't get approached by the saucer-like craft that shot down his, his aircraft, the occupants of these craft who said, you go back to your people and you tell them you found nothing and don't ever come down here again. Okay, fine. Now... It is known that there are underground uh, or below the ice surface, there are lakes, and they're far enough down to where, I mean, you can put a tank top and shorts on if you want. It's not freezing cold there. Uh, there is something about that place that has attracted many, many uh, scientific expeditions uh, for, for all kinds of research. And it's slow going there because it's pretty hard. It's, depending on when you go down there, it's pretty harsh climate. I am convinced that there is some something there. What it is, I do not know. But with the Admiral Byrd account, I mean, either that's a total fabrication. I can't imagine that it is. Uh, and you, things like the disappearing aircraft over the B Bermuda Triangle, we know that that uh, in World War II and, and other, uh, other uh, aircraft too, and not necessarily in a state of war, uh, did these aircraft disappear. We know that, that phenomena exist phenomena occur sometimes it's a one-time thing sometimes it's a recurring thing so antarctica is the last i think it's the last frontier as far as uh geographical geological and uh, maybe even more than that um research and discovery because the the again depending on i don't know that much about it but i can tell you you go down there at the wrong time of year and there's going to be a problem. Now, the United States has had, um, you know, a radio station down there for a long time, uh, going way, way back. But again, the, the the climate is so harsh, you might as well have landed on a another planet. At certain times of the year, you can go there and you, and you can do things. Now, how long you can stay, I, I simply do not know the answer to this question. Now, one of the flat earth guys is saying, like, what if there's land and they won't tell us about the land? I mean, do we think there might be an economic interest there? It's like, yeah, man, we might all wake up tomorrow morning and magically we're all wearing blue hats, too. So I suppose anything is possible, but it has attracted the interest of many people. And just to add something to that Nazi component, I read a book many years ago called uh, Martin Bormann. Uh, Nazi in exile, and he was not killed in a t during a tank battle outside of Berlin. He made it to South America. Uh, Mueller, he just dropped off the scope, the SS chief. He was gone. Uh, Adolf Hitler survived the war and um, wound up uh, living out his years in uh, Patagonia. 
uh, Harry Cooper with Shark Hunters will tell you that. There's plenty of pictures and there's plenty of evidence to support it. And this is what's really good. Paul Manning was a CBS, I don't think he was, I don't remember if he was CBS or not, but he was a contemporary of Walter Cronkite, who was a hardcore socialist, by the way, a Fabian socialist, and everybody in, on the East Coast knew it, but we all thought of him as America's father, you know. Well, he wasn't. He was a socialist all the way. But they were both World War II era correspondents. And Paul wanted to meet Martin Borman because his son's still down there. Joseph Mengele was down there. Joseph Mengele wound up in Chicago uh, helping, working with Mary Sherman and that collider that she had at the University of New Orleans uh, when, when she was working on weaponizing the cancer virus. And she was murdered down there. And all those dudes from the Kennedy days, Oswald and, and Judith Baker, who was a, a pro. A, a, a prodigy, and she worked with Mary Sherman, and, and Judith Baker wrote down everything, Clay Shaw and David Ferry, all those people lived practically in the same neighborhood. They all knew each other. They were all CIA assets. Lee Harvey Oswald was a CIA asset, if not an actual officer. All you have to do is ask yourself the question, how does a Marine radar specialist defect to the Soviet Union and then come back and not wind up in Leavenworth or dead? I mean, how? It doesn't happen. So... Everybody's talking to everybody. Uh, M.S. King did a, a big, he's written a book, I Don't Like Ike, about the dark side of Dwight Eisenhower. And it's just amazing. Everything that you think is true is not, pretty much, with the exception of the Holy Scripture. And that's been messed with a little bit, but because it's divinely inspired, Father is not going to let it be messed with that much. So, back to Borman. Paul Manning wanted to go down there and meet him. At the last minute, Borman's people called off the meeting, and it didn't happen. But you know who he did meet? He met Eva Braun, Hitler's wife. End of story. Hitler and Eva survived the war. So did Borman. So did Mengele. A bunch of people did. And then, of course, there was Operation Paperclip. So Willie Messerschmitt came over, and Werner von Braun came over, and a whole bunch of people. Had it a big time. Out there in New Mexico, just whooping it up. They've got their swastikas over their little clubhouse and everything. People have no idea that they really don't. But you can know. But you can't be a parrot that just repeats what you hear. You have to question everything. I don't expect people to just believe that every word that comes out of my mouth is some holy nugget. I expect it that the things that I say to pique somebody's interest to the point where they say, let me just find out if this guy knows what he's talking about. And what I really want as the teacher, if you will, is I want my students to surpass me. Sad is the teacher whose students do not surpass him. I give him everything I've got, however much that is. After that, if they're interested, it's up to them. Everybody wants to be fed like little birds. On, and, and me too. Like little birds on a branch. Oh, they get their little beaks turned up. They want mommy to come and vomit some well-chewed, masticated worms. Feed us, feed us, feed us. Well, you've got to feed yourself. If, you, if you're waiting to be fed, <laughs> that's pretty much what you're going to get is worms. You're going to have to feed yourself. But the first thing to do is put yourself in a position to learn the truth and withstand the truth when you receive it. And the way you do this yeah, you know, Russell, you and I have sat here like a couple of guys popping off with some off-color language, this and that. That doesn't that doesn't mean I don't believe in, in Christ. It doesn't mean that I don't believe uh, that because he has saved me. Saved you from what? Saved me from dying in a fallen state. Now, if you want to find out what that means, you're going to have to do some research or we'll sit here for another four hours. And I'm going to have to pull the divine Miss B in to back me up on some of this when I get a little bit inaccurate here and there. It is an ongoing tending of the garden. It's very easy to screw up. In fact, it's hard not to. But it is possible, once you accept that people don't mean to screw up, they just do. Okay. Once you accept that and you cut loose of the, well, I just can't stand it or myself because I screw up, get past that. It's going to happen. It's understood you're going to sin. It's the intent. It's the desire not to make mistakes. It's the desire not to do things that are wrong to do things that are right and not count on you. Hey, I did something really nice for, for a guy today. Let me tell you about it. No, just do the nice thing that's between you and the person you did the nice thing for and go on. And, and, and don't do it because you want to aggrandize yourself, even to yourself. Do it because it was the right thing to do and go on. 
that's what you do. So, and and that's that's what I want. We have we have been lied to, but again, much like the truth that we want, not that truth. I want the real truth. Well, the lies are not necessarily the ones that we want, meaning the ones we can detect. The best lies are the ones that look like truth, but they're not. It looks, swims, quacks, everything, just like a duck, but it's not. It's not a duck. It's not a duck at all. They just want you to think that it is. But again, I say, it's not. Be discerning. Why would somebody write... Why would somebody write in a scripture that old, have the eyes to see and the ears to hear? Well, that's in your head now. So try. Ask for it. You receive not because you ask not. Father, in the name of your Holy Son, Lord Jesus, give me the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the faith to be able to withstand the real truth of this life, and you'll be on your way, and don't turn it loose. Remember what I said, read the first 10, cha 10 chapters of Matthew. It won't hurt you. It'll actually help you, and it makes a great deal of sense. You'll worry less when you've finished it. And I, again, I say it, it won't even take you an hour. Do it. You'll like it. Yeah, that's my favorite gospel, how to be a Christian. Well, that's it, man. John, love having you on the show. Brilliant stuff. Well, I probably tweaked a few people, but look, it, it was... It was Anybody that f feels tweaked tonight, it's because I care about you, too. I, I really do. I want everybody to make it. People say, why is God taking so long? Is Jesus supposed to come back? Why Why isn't he here already? Things are really screwed up. It's because he's running out. the. And he even says so in Scripture. He's running the timeline out a little longer to get as many people as possible to not die in a fallen state. He does what he wants. So get with the program while you still got time. I care for all of you. Even if you think I'm a complete a-hole, it doesn't matter. I still care about you. That's why I do this gig. Do I want to go hang out? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe uh, you remind me or I remind you of my crazy uncle or whatever. Love is one thing. Liking people is something else. So let's just go with love, and it's the most powerful force that there is. Let's roll with that. Let's get the love in place, and we'll worry about liking each other later. Okay? Well, I like you. <laughs> well, I like you, Mr. Scott. I like you very much. You're a very nice man. Oh, well, there you go. I can die now. <laughs> Getting with the program, how can my audience get with Caravan to Midnight? Well, we post the. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. We go to um, we go to a news segment uh, every day. We have one, and we post it on YouTube. And sometimes it's as short as 36 minutes because we don't have because we're free of corporates and you know, all that. We can do what, pretty much what we want. So sometimes those news segments will run 56 minutes, and sometimes they'll run 36 minutes. And they can see those for free, and they can sample the sorts of things that that we talk about, and they'll hear. Uh, who we're going to speak with, and they can go to uh, caravantomidnight.com. Do not use any numbers and do not leave any letters out of midnight, as in N-I-T-E. Don't do that. Just caravantomidnight.com, and you can uh, click on guests, and you can see who's in there. Uh, but gosh, man, we talk to a lot of very cool people. I want to say Peter Vincent Pry, uh, the man who who uh, developed this program that became known as the Microsoft Flight Simulator. This man went on for over seven hours. We made it into a two-part show and moved the next day's guest off a little bit. Just moved everybody down. Uh, because he totally deconstructed that whole Loretta Fuddy dying in the, the crash of that Cessna caravan out there in Hawaii, the one who was cert the, 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 the Hawaiian health director who certified Obama's birth certificate. Uh, that is not what it appears to be. And this man is a genius. You talk about genius level intellect. He has it. And you watch this thing and you go, I don't believe what I'm looking at. I'll give you a hint. Uh, flight restriction at flight level 24 to 27, which means uh, 24,000, 27,000 feet flight restriction, government flight restriction right over the crash site. Swimmer delivery vehicles. All kinds of people in the water. People standing on the uh, on the seabed. They're not out there, you know, struggling, you know, trying not to drown. They're standing. 
on the sea bottom and the airplanes right there and there's video from inside the the uh, the the aircraft when it's supposed to be crashing. You don't see anybody upset. They're just sitting there, you know, like it's no big deal. Catastrophic engine failure. Really, a Pratt and Whitney turbine. Uh, they don't normally suffer catastrophic engine failure, especially if it's a if it's an air taxi. They have to be inspected continuously. And then uh, the, the man went on to show that see this engine. This is the engine that was supposed to be the one that came off the plane but it's not it's actually this engine notice the different ways that the propeller blades are bent and all this stuff he totally again we st for, for me to sit there and talk with one man for seven and a half hours it's got to be pretty compelling and it was but uh john mcafee comes on we had him on arc midnight this past saturday night so take a look it's youtube it's free and um and just check out these these new segments. And occasionally we'll post a program up there, a whole, the whole thing, if we really think that people really need to know this. We've talked to the entire Finnegan family of the, the murdered uh, head of the household, Robert Finnegan. That was just a, that was just a cowardly backshooting murder and nothing more. Uh, we talked with uh, all the Bundy women. We've talked with Ray McGovern, uh, the CIA whistleblower. We've talked with William Binney, NSA whistleblower. Uh, all, all of these spectacular people, and, and many whom you've never heard of, and you listen to him, this guy named George Webb, this this man is, is a very, very bright guy. And um, we're going to have him on Saturday night on Arc Midnight, uh, 10 to midnight on KLIF. And that'll be streamed over YouTube also. And you can pick it up on KLIF.com and all that. He came across a, a drug deal and he tried to report to the authorities, but then he found out that the cops were actually running it. And his research eventually led him to a discussion of the Awan brothers, these Pakistanis that Debbie Wasserman Schultz hired. And he talks about the 20 burglaries in the House of Representatives and uh, who's making what router and who's buying those routers and all this stolen stuff and these high-level security clearances and everything else. And then people wonder where the leaks come from. They've been fired now, but uh, but we don't know what's going to happen, happen to them after the firing. We just know that these guys were running wild through there. And it's been one of our most popular programs. So um, and when I say that, what I mean is people were like, we got more wows on that one than, than on many others. And we get wows on, on a lot of them. So it's not boring. And it's not like a, an eight-hour discussion about uh, you know how George Washington uh, did whatever he did before uh, the revolution came. It's, it's, not, it's not just stayed, boring academic stuff this is this is hot stuff and much of it is so far ahead of reports that will come out later about the subject that we happen to be discussing that you just won't believe it so if you want to i mean we do our best to keep everybody ahead of the airplane because if you get behind the airplane you're going to crash it that's that's what you do when you're flying airplanes you think to yourself what are the next two things that i need to do and that's called staying ahead of the airplane and we try to keep the audience in that condition at all times so Check it out on YouTube and, and listen in again for free on uh, on Saturday night, KLIF, AM 570, Dallas, Texas, 10 to midnight central. And I appreciate you letting me put in a little plug. No bravo, Sierra, for you. Cutting edge premium radio. Yeah, you got to pay because it's better. Can you pay by the month? Not by the month, but by the three months. All right, it's 25 for three months, 45 for six, 60 for the year. So, I mean, that's just that's just normal, you know. Premium cutting-edge radio with the best host in the business, John B. Wells. Hey, John B. Wells, it's an honor, really, having you on the show. Thank you so much for being a guest on the program today. Listen, if it wasn't for men like you, and, and there's only one, there's only one Russell Scott, but if it, if it wasn't for you, your audience wouldn't have heard me. So thank you very, very much for having me on. I, I, I appreciate it, and I mean it.